Hello. Today I'd like to share with you some new tech, my new tech, and that is my brand new 2018 Ford Focus SE. I just picked this thing up a little over a week ago now and I'm driving it and I'm having a great time with it. It's got some great features here. So the lightning is the, the lightning. The color is lightning blue and it's a shade I really like. It's actually not too uh, different from that of the Saturn Ion it's replacing. Uh, but there's some cool things about this car that I'm going to show off. But there you can kind of see the lines and see how it looks. And uh, let's, let's talk about some of the tech in it. Now, first of all, we've got the integrated key here. As you can see, we've got um, all of our buttons right on the key itself. And it's kind of a new style key here. It's not a traditional key. It's ground into it. It's not, it's not your traditional ridges on the outside. The ridges are on the inside. And we've got the unlock and lock and the emergency horn and then the trunk button which you have to do by pressing twice now once i do that the trunk opens up just as nice as you please it's a pretty decent sized trunk for a car of this size those back seats do flip down as you can see i got a, a, some stuff in there already uh, these here are winter mats that are that are plastic they didn't I bother putting them in because it's spring but I'll have to put those in uh, it'll be nice in the winter time keep the salt and whatnot um, out of the carpet but that is the trunk it opens up quite nicely I like that a lot okay so here we are on the inside of the Ford Focus and as you can see we've got um, we've got uh, a nice nice cabin here we've got a cup holder down here and a little storage space here and we've got a full instrument cluster we've got controls on the steering wheel and we've got a central screen there as well that i will uh, show you a little bit of uh, we've got a instrument panel here with you know media and phone and and all these things and then we've got our climate control system down here uh, and we've got uh, a uh, you know our our, our 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 shifter and our power and all this stuff so i'm going to talk through all of these things um and uh, we're going to start right here with the instrument cluster here so as you can see right now it is showing me uh four things there uh in the center it's showing well it's showing me more than that i've got the temperature in the upper right upper left excuse me more the right in the lower right, I've got a compass. I got my Odo there in the odometer there in the lower uh, left. And I can see um, that I'm in park right now. So I can see um, you know, where, 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 I'm, where the shifter is at. And, and then I got that four block of, of information. So the upper, upper right is my odometer. Excuse me, upper left. I'm getting left and right. Upper left is odometer. Upper right is my miles per gallon, uh, which right now is running at 32.3, which is pretty good. Uh, my lower left is uh, what they call the instant MPG, and that changes as I'm driving, so I can see how I'm doing if I'm burning more gas or less gas or whatever. And then my miles to E. So right now I'm at 344. As you can see, I filled up recently, so that's about how many miles I get on a tank of gas. And that is, is pretty accurate. I, not on purpose, got it down to within where that was four miles and it was still going. So I really don't want to get any closer than that, uh, but that was, that was just a bit of circumstance. So now if I use this pad right here, I can control what this shows. So if I go to the left here, I got a, a choice of trip one and trip two so i've got two trip odometers uh, they don't look diff any different as far as the information that they uh, possess but they do uh, give me ability to have a separate trip odometer uh, if i want it for some particular purpose um, while i'm on the screen uh, you'll know you may notice that there by the i got the little graphic image of the car which shows me like if the lights are on or if they're off uh, like right now the lights are on you can see the headlights are or actually those are the parking lights or the uh, the daylight running lights are on you would see the the red glow in the back 
uh, if the actual headlights were on, like if I turn them on, you'll see, you might be able to see that the, uh, the red glow in the back uh, starts up um, to show that the headlights are on. But I'll leave them on auto and they'll turn off because it's bright enough out here that they don't need to be on. But if I go up and down on this little pad here on the steering wheel, I can see... I could I get a choice for what displays I could do you know what what is my speed if I want to see that predominantly I can see my trip odometer uh, I can see what my average fuel rate is so that's the 32.3 that I was talking about a little while ago uh, I can see the instant fuel economy right now it's at zero because I don't have anything in 344 miles to E and then my trip timer I reset this I reset this um, every time I fill up so so that's like one day and 48 hours and then seconds um, is what it's showing me there um, I think it's definitely one day because I filled up like yesterday so I'm not so it's, it's not hours minutes seconds it's like days minute hours although that might be runtime now that I think about it that's probably runtime not actual time that's passed so it's been one hour and 49 minutes worth of drive time um, since I filled up okay so and if I go back to the left here uh, you know so trip two gives me all the same information but just with the same with a different trip odometer as I said I've got the information area here so if I click OK on that I can do a system check see how many messages I have uh, we got the my key feature um, if we had that installed um, we could track um, the different keys what the distance is uh, I think that's more like if you're if you're taking um, uh, you, know, you, get, you get children and you want to you want to keep track of how much they're driving as you can see I don't have any my keys set up right now um, and that's what's available to me in the information area and then I've got some settings here so I can do driver assist so driver assist will give me the traction control I leave that turned on uh, my vehicle I've got the compass so I showed you the compass there in the lower right I can choose to turn that off if I want but I like having a compass I'm leaving that on the lighting is going to control these um, either the rain light if and I think this is and this is something I like my my older car Saturn had this where if um, the 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 windshield wipers were on the rains the lights act automatically came on and uh, I like that a lot um, I don't know why it backed me up there to information I guess I sat there too long um, so so I got both of those on you got the daytime running lights on and got the rain light on that's very nice auto lamp delay uh, is the default of 20 seconds as you can see I can set it to a couple of different things if I want but the, the default seems to work well I definitely don't want it to be manual I like things doing things for me automatically like and that's all the settings I have there and then I am back to um, just uh, going back to trip one going back to my auto there so that is what's going on in the center panel there so let's see what else we have let's look at the steering wheel a bit closer so obviously uh, this was what I was just controlling uh, that screen with was with this I've got a standard um, cruise control happening down here on and off you will notice that once I turn it on in the upper right hand corner it now says set MPH so it's waiting for me to set uh, a speed at which I want the cruise control to be active. And once I do that uh, with you know this button right here, then I will see that whatever that miles per hour is up there in the upper right. And when it's active, it will be, I believe, green in color. And then when it's inactive, it'll look like this. It'll be kind of grayed out. I think I might actually have a line through it. As long as the, as long as the cruise control is on, I'll still be able to see what the... Um, what what it's set at there and that's a feature i really like you got on off there you've got resume and cancel and then you got set plus and set minus kind of standard for a cruise control over here we've got uh this little pad is is for controlling uh the sync system over here so we've got sync it's there's like sync and sync three 
and uh, sync three is your for your more high end. And so this is basic sync. So you've got these two buttons here on the side. So they are, have a couple different functions. They can be for selecting tracks left or right, forward or back, I guess would be the way to say it. And obviously that's for answering a phone call and that's for hanging up a phone call. You've got the volume buttons right here, which I think are kind of self-explanatory. And then this button is a sync button. So if I hold, press it down, you get the sync tone. Please say a command. And I can, I can say cancel. And uh, try saying a device name like phone or USB. Main menu. Say a command. Cancel. Canceling. So I can, you can see some of the commands that, that are there. So by pressing that, and the microphone for that is just right up there, just right there. Uh, but so by pressing that, I can do things like send a text message. I can, I can uh, uh, call somebody. We'll see uh, that this interfaces with my phone. Um, so it's, I've got my full, my full address book and all that kind of stuff uh, there. So, so that's how I can invoke the, the, um, the sync system. So let's go over here to, to the main display here. So this is this serves a number of functions. First of all, if I put the car into reverse, you will see it becomes my backup camera. Um, so I can see behind me, if I turn my wheel, you can see I've got the little guides that are showing me how much I'm turning and, and what my path will be. I find that to be a really cool feature. Uh, when it is uh, in any other mode, uh, besides backing up, it's showing me usually what media I'm listening to to last. So uh, you'll see that uh, it says BT audio there to the left. And so that's Bluetooth audio. That's connecting to my phone. It's uh, at this point, it's playing a podcast that I'm listening to. And one of the things that's that's common throughout this is I've got these four options here and they correspond to these four buttons here. This is a mute button that's active for everything. Uh, but so like this would be the options button because that says options up there and then device and then info and then this is play pause um, So and actually that was playing I didn't want it to um, So uh, there's the volume volume control you can also control uh, So volume is right there. I did it without moving the camera this is also control play pause so some of the things i can do if i go to options here i've got the option to shuffle or repeat tracks um, if i click device i could choose what device that's the device i've set up that's my uh, moto z2 that's my current phone uh, so from here i could add another device i could delete this device i could i could disconnect or i could cancel uh, so we'll hit cancel there uh, so I can hit info so I will press the info button and it brings up some more information uh, like the album um, since I'm listening to a podcast here I'm not quite sure what this particular one that says unknown is that might be composer or something like that um, you know, the one thing I, I don't like you'll see everything here is running off the edge of the screen and they just give it the dot 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 um, the one thing you can't do is is there's no way to to see more information to see the rest of this that obviously doesn't scroll and There's no way that I am aware of to make that happen and that's something I would like to, would like to have but Alas, it just it just doesn't doesn't do that. It just doesn't do that um, So let's um, see what else we have done here so I've got this full number pad and that can be used for a number of things number one radio so I can go to the radio and I've got FM1 let's turn that down Wow so if I go to radio I've got um, FM1 FM2 AM1 AM2 so I've got I can have two different sets and where that's nice is for the preset so you'll see that I've got a preset one so this station is preset one and if I press number two down here I press number two then I go to preset two and so I can have if I had enough stations I could have two different sets of presets on FM1 versus FM2 uh, and it shows me right there that I am on FM1 if I'm on a station that's not um, that's not on my I don't want to mute that but uh, so that's not on my preset then I can hold down this button for the alt store and it auto stores that um, and makes it one of the presets 
there. So, um, and for some reason, this takes a, a, a bit longer than I would really think it should. Um, but uh, yeah, it does work. It's just, obviously it's not something you're doing all the time, but it does seem to take more time than I would necessarily think. So then I've got Sirius. So I've got three different channels for Sirius. This this car came with six months worth of Sirius radio. I am not planning on keeping it because um, I just don't listen to radio music all that often, but uh, it is there. Um, where I use the most is media here. Uh, and once again, it says you got the BT audio. That's what I use the most. It does it does offer um, mobile apps, so things like Stitcher, it can talk to directly. However, I found that I preferred the the experience I got from using just the Bluetooth uh, connection directly, as opposed to, you know, having it interface directly to the Stitcher app. And Stitcher's not not all I use. In fact, I don't even really use Stitcher anymore, but I did play around with it a little bit. Um, so with media, I can have, um, uh, let's see, let's go back. I don't want to be there. But so for options, what I have here is if I press the options button, once again, shuffle or repeat track. Doesn't make a ton of sense for a podcast, so I don't need those. Device info is kind of the same, same things there uh, that I had. So it, it just enables me to play whatever I want to off of my phone, be it podcasts. I can play my music off of my phone. Um, the other options you will notice uh, for media are actually grayed out, USB 1 and USB 2. Down here is a USB port right there. Um, and there's actually another one in this, in this console right here. Uh, and what I could do with this system, what it will allow you to do is if I have a little flash drive that could that is plugged in down here, I could load that up with music and I could directly play off of it. Um, that's not what I wanted. Uh, I could directly play off of it. Once I plugged it in, then USB 1 would be available, and I could select that as a source for music. So um, that that's a nice feature. That's a nice feature. Uh, one I'm actually planning on using, not so much in this car, but, but whenever we replace uh, the wife's car, which is kind of our main touring vehicle, I'm planning on doing that just because that way we don't have to be bringing in a bunch of CDs for things. Uh, so what else we have here? You know, so we got this little um, control panel here, this uh, control rosette here. This is what I'm using to control the options as far as when I select things left or right or need to click OK on something. So that works in conjunction with these buttons up here. Uh, I've got the phone. So if I click on phone, I get this. So I get a number of things. I can dial a number, which is just going to enable me to, to, to type in a number down here and have it be up there. Um, I don't need to do that. I can redial the last number. I can go to phone book and I can see my phone's actual phone book. So these are, th are things from Verizon that, um, that are actually in my phone book directory. So I can, I can do that and I can see uh, my actual phone book and pick people out. And if I use the sync system, it can find them based upon based upon that. So that's quite handy. I can look at my call history if I wish. I can speed dial. Now this is something I haven't set up yet, obviously, but I can have speed dial entries. I probably should set this up for some people. So that could be uh, be handy. Text messaging, it will notice when I get a text message. It won't let me um, read it on the screen if I'm moving, uh, but I can listen to it while I'm moving. And then it gives me some responses for um, automatic responses where I could send it back and say like, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll call you back later. I'm, I'm driving or whatever. I do kind of wish that it would, um, allow me to have an option of just okay, or maybe, um, uh, or maybe customize those. But, um, but yeah, it, it doesn't give me, it does not give me that option. Let me back up here and get out of this. Uh, Bluetooth devices, this is going to take me to the same thing where I can manage my Bluetooth device. You notice a little star by, by that, that tells me it's the primary one. So I can have multiple ones, but then like if, if we set up my wife's phone on this and then we were both in this car at the same time, mine would connect because it's the primary one is, is how that's going to work. Um, and then we got phone settings, which is just going to be some basic basic uh, settings about my phone and my, and my, and my number and all that kind of thing. 
Um, so the other thing we have down here is menu. So if I click on that, I've got a whole host of settings down here. So I got sync settings. So whether or not I want Bluetooth on, do I want, uh, you know, what are, once again, what are my Bluetooth devices? This is beginning to look familiar, isn't it? Um, I can set, reset the defaults. I can do a master reset. I'm not going to do either one of those things. Uh, I can, there are things you can install on sync. Uh, you can see the system info. You can do some voice settings, uh, as far as if you want, uh, what kind of mode you want for interactive, you want novice or advanced novice, I guess I'm supposed to say that confirm prompt. Yes or no. Do you want to confirm the phone? Uh, that's turned off. That's still the default defaults. If, um, I had a USB plugged in. I could browse it uh, through that. And then I think I've also got, okay. So, and then sync applications. If you have any sync applications, you can uh, on your phone. You know, so things like Stitcher will work directly with sync. I mentioned that. So you could, you could set them up here. You also got 911 assist, which is by default on. And what that will do is if I was to get into an accident and I thought I might need 911, it would call 911 through my phone for me without me having to do it manually. So it's kind of like OnStar kind of thing. I've got audio settings. Uh, so I, I got the speed compensating for the volume. Um, and it's doing uh, three, going up three ticks uh, for, the, for the speed. And that works well. Um, but I could adjust it if I want it to be more. Um, for sound, here you got your, your typical sound uh, adjustments that you could make. You get your occupancy mode and you got optimize all and optimize driver and i tried optimize driver since i'm typically in this car by myself but uh, i actually uh, enjoyed it or, or like the sound better with it optimized for all i feel like i get a fuller sound than just having the the speakers near the driver go so i leave this on optimize all instead of optimize driver um, clock settings, you can set the date, you can set the time, you can choose 24 hour mode. That's fairly standpoint or fairly standard display settings. Where do you want the language? You want the temperature in Fahrenheit or Celsius. I am definitely a Fahrenheit guy. Camera settings, you can, if you want to delay on your camera, I don't really know what the purpose of that would be, but if you wanted to, to delay a bit, um, when you're using the camera in the back, you could do that. And those are the menu settings. Now, if I go down here, I've got a button called sound. And if I press that, uh, I'm going to get the same sound menu we saw before for adjusting the sound. So it's a way to get there directly. Um, I do have buttons here again to be going backwards and forwards through tracks. I've got, this is the emergency uh, hazard uh, light uh, button here. Um, before I leave this area, we have we have the two vents here, and these two center vents can be turned on or off. So that is off, and that is on, and then you got you know if you want half on or half off or or what have you, you can you can adjust that that way. Down here we've got our um, comfort control, and what, one of the things I like about this is if you touch anything here, it doesn't matter what. Uh, if I adjust the time the temperature a little bit, it will turn the 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 whole unit on with whatever the the settings were the last time it was used and i can always turn it off with that button but if i do the temperature or this or just say i want that it will turn it back on for me so i i find that to be a, a nice little feature if i say i want max if if i say I, i'm cold i want i want to be as 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 cool as possible if i set that all the way to cold um, you'll see I get a max AC light that comes on and automatically turns it on with internal, uh, keeping the air uh, circulating from internally, and I get the AC turned on all automatically. Uh, I've got uh, front defrost, I got rear defrost, I've also got the three um, uh, setting heated seats for both seats, which is very, very nice. So down here, I've got a little bit of a, of a storage cubby, so I keep a, a roll of mints here, and I've got my um, grazer opener. Down here, we've got a power um, unit to plug in power. I've actually got two of these. You can also use the USB for power. So if you've got a USB cord um, for something that, that you want to have power, you can, use, you can use this, but it can also interface directly with um, with the sync system as well. So you really get a lot of opportunities to power, especially since you've got a USB and a power, once again, back here in this 
in this console right here. Uh, this is the heated seat, the heated seat, the heated steering wheel. So when you turn that on, the steering wheel gets all nice and warm like, and I'm looking forward to this in the cold winter months. I did use it once or twice when it got a little chilly, but it's not too bad. We've got the standard, um, uh, you know, this is an automatic, fully automatic car. Um, so parking reverse, neutral, drive low. The one thing about it that I don't necessarily like is there's not a really great indicator to tell me am I in drive there, am I in, in neutral. Uh, and sometimes I think I'm in low or I think I'm, I go in low and I think I'm in drive because there's not a really great indicator here. You do have the indicator there uh, just below uh, it tells me that oh i'm in drive it's it, the d is a little bit bigger and it's orange so i can use that to, to know for sure where i'm at but i i do kind of wish that this had maybe a little light here or something or some sort of an indicator to better tell me what i'm in uh, you got this little button here and actually i don't like the placement of this button at all um and this is for uh going down hills if i turn if i click on that you'll see i get this little um, indicator of a car going down a hill there and so if I'm going to go down a, a a steep hill I could turn that on and it would basically keep me from um, you know I it would keep me in a low gear as I'm going down the hill I, I'm constantly hitting this thing if I because I do tend to sit here a lot with a with with, uh, with my hand on the on on the gear shift here and um, I, I wish they'd really like you know put that here I don't know what goes here probably something else but you know give me a button here or something i would have preferred that um yeah i don't think of cup holders as high tech but i gotta tell you these cup holders did wow me first of all they're pretty deep you can see i got a water bottle here and it's it's pretty long and it fits in there and it's it's pretty deep um you do have one of these things um that comes with it that you can put in either like this and that will work nicely if you have like a can of pop. It's just deep enough where the, the can is going to hit these little things so it gets held securely, but yet you can still grab it. Or if you do want to put something deep like this in there, you can uh, turn it like this and put it down in like that. And then you can put something deeper in there as well. So uh, it, it's a pretty nice pretty nice uh, thing there the thing that really wowed me about this is is uh, one day shortly after i bought this car i bought some uh i went to chinese and i i, I got some some uh, leftover chinese in those little boxes and that box fits perfectly down in here and this holds it in place and it doesn't move while you're driving and i love that i thought that was great um that that they thought of chinese takeout carriers because it just fits down in there really nice and sits right on top of this um yeah i thought that was pretty cool uh as far as other things you know, we got glove box you got more another cup holder over there you know the passenger sides i think fairly standard looking in the back you can see that we've got seats for for three um you know if they know each other fairly well i would say um you got some decent leg room it's not super great you can see i got a couple things down in there but it's not super great leg room um but there is some uh the seats do fold down so that you with a 60 40 split uh so that you can actually do um put bigger things into the trunk so that is the interior i think of the 2018 ford focus let's go check out the engine so here we are looking inside the engine of this thing so as you can see we've got one two three four uh this is a four cylinder engine uh so it's it's pretty pretty clean obviously nothing like a new engine but we've got your your antifreeze there you've got your windshield washer fluid here you've got your brake fluid right back there this i believe is the battery it's covering the battery up right there and this is probably this is a fuse panel right here so that's nice and easy to get to um this i believe is probably going to be like a like the main air filter uh, it looks to me like this looks like an air hose so this is going to be the air filter all this stuff looks pretty easy to get to here you don't have to worry about uh, checking the transmission fluid that appears to be sealed uh, but this is this is the engine of the car um, 
and like I say, it see, it seems it seems pretty nicely laid out. Everything's pretty easy to get to. I like that. Uh, easy for pouring more solutions in there. Here's your oil check, uh, and if you need to add more oil. 5W20 oil, and it's interesting, it's a synthetic blend oil, and that's why we can go 7,500 miles between oil changes. So but that's a glimpse at what is under the hood. So I hope you enjoyed this little, this little view of my new baby, the 2018 Ford Focus SE. I will uh, share other videos in the future of other new tech that I get. But this is obviously a big one. I won't get one this size very often. But uh, this is a piece of technology I am really enjoying using every day. Uh, so thanks for watching. And until next time, be seeing you.